three, we remove the mica wafers to eliminate the silver mica disease. Then temporarily, we hooked up two variable caps to the input and the output of the IF transformer. Then tune them for 455 kilohertz. We then measured the variable cap capacitance and installed the correct capacitors to both the input and output. With all the components removed, I cleaned and painted the chassis, then remounted the IF cans. And now we pick up where we left off. Okay, all the wires are hooked back up again. Let's go ahead and hook up the tuning cap. And when I get done with that, I'll be right back.
Okay, I put a little bit of Loctite type material on these nut or these screws. Next, we've got to solder in the wires for the tuning cap. Okay, we're going to turn on the variac here. We got it plugged in. Here, bring it up to 20 volts. About 60 volts. Motor starting to turn here on the clock. We're at 80 volts. We're at 100 volts. Yeah, I turned off the, the variac because I want to plug in the, the knobs here. Okay, we're starting to hear some sound. Okay, we need to find our other antenna wire here.
Okay, it looks like we've taken care of the silver mica disease. We've got uh, good audio. Uh, it does need to be tuned. So let's put on the faceplate. Uh, we need to restring the dial string. We need to put on new wires for the antenna. And we need to take a look at the clock here. So let's continue on. Okay, let's get the dial cord on here if we can. It says three turns, one, two, three turns, up and around. And then short. So. Two turns. See what that looks like. Much better. Got well, let's go back. Start putting three turns on there. Okay, this should be white and black. I don't have any white, so how about blue? Use blue and black.
Okay, the antenna is hooked up. I need to clean the knobs. I'll do that. I did want to show the difference here of the two knobs. Uh, one cleaning and before cleaning. Quite a bit of difference. Okay, here are the two knobs. Uh, we use Q-tips, uh, glass cleaner, some Brasso, and a lot of elbow grease. And they don't look too bad. Okay, we're going to do a quick alignment on this. Uh, the alignment procedures call out for a 455 signal put in at the antenna and adjust these two coils. Uh, the tuning cap is set to the far right hand side and we've got that. We've got the scope hooked up to the output instead of a meter. Let me get the camera on here. There we go. This is where my camera battery gave out on me. I will go ahead and try to explain the alignment uh, with a few pictures. So here we go. If we look at the back plate markers, they show the far left hand side of the tuning dial is called the reference. The far right hand side is 1640 kilocycles. And in between we have 580, 965, and 475. And this is how those markers look. So as per the alignment instructions, we inject a 455 kilohertz signal into the front end of the radio, uh, the 12BE6, and we adjust T3 and T2. Now T3 has two lugs in it and T2 has two lugs in it. And we adjust for maximum signal. We then change the frequency generator to 1640 kilocycles and we're adjusting the trimmer cap on the tuning cap for the best signal coming in through the antenna. We then move it to 1475 and do the same thing to C1. With the alignment done, the radio sounds great. So in the final part, we'll take a look at the clock, reassemble the radio, and take a look at the case. If you found this video useful or entertaining, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.